Welcome to Visionaries Global Media, your number one source for podcasting entertainment. Visionaries Global Media, envisioning excellence on a global scale. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, or however you choose to identify, welcome to View from the Top Rope, where we discuss anything and everything about this wild and wacky world that we live on. I am Chad, coming to you from Zeus's Treehouse, and I am joined remotely by the co-host with the mostest, my good buddy, and the man who soon will be a father, it is Big Baby Daddy Diesel! What's up? Hi, Flyers. I'm joining you from Diesel's Dapper Dungeon of Delight. And, yeah. Might as well get on, because I have some things to say. First topic. Segment. Oh. oh, shit. Oh, shit. Diesel's one trying to push it on here. Well, then, I guess like we won't beat around the bush, as I like to say. And we'll just jump right into topic number one, or segment number one. Correct way to say that. Which is... The Top Rope Rewind. Whoop! So, Diesel, you foreshadowed it like five seconds ago, so don't keep the people waiting any longer. Well, I had an eventful slash uneventful weekend. So, Friday night, I was working, and uh, I was making a delivery, I was walking back to my car, and in the driveway where this house was, it was a one-car driveway, and there was a truck in the driveway. So I went to walk around the truck, and I stepped off the driveway, stepped in a hole, rolled my ankle, like, all my weight on my ankle. And, yeah, I knew right then that it wasn't good. It hurt a lot. Um, but I was still still felt good enough to finish my shift. I had a limp and stuff like that, but when I was moving around, I was still good. You know, I could still walk up the steps in the back of the pizza place to, and all, everything like that. So I uh, came home after my shift was over, and I sat down for a little while, and I went to get up, and I couldn't put any weight on my foot at all. And it was the foot that I had surgery on, like, three and a half years ago, so it's like, fuck. Like... Like, this could be serious. And, like, I'm, like, doing, like, research to, like, figure out what I should do, if I should wait to go see a doctor, if I should go right now. And so after about, I don't know, hour, hour and a half of, like, trying to weigh my options, I decided I should probably just go now. For one, it's, like, peace of mind. And for some reason, like, all urgent cares – aren't open on the weekends anymore, which doesn't make any damn sense from, to me because it's called urgent care. So, I mean, there's urgent in the word, but yeah, so <laughs> we, so uh, hopped in Emily's car at about midnight and we went to the ER, which sucks because $350 copay, but it would have been $350 copay if I would have waited till the morning because as I said, no urgent care. So, when um there was nobody there so like i checked in they brought me back into a room like immediately I did all the stuff with the nurse uh answer the questions and stuff like that and she walked out and like 10 seconds later the doctor was already in the room uh, and then they brought the x-ray machine to my room so i didn't have to like do anything so i was like for i guess it was a good experience <laughs> I mean, if you're looking for it's positives, not, yeah. yeah, you know, look at the silver lining of you know hurting yourself and having to go to the ER. That's crazy that they just brought the e- X-ray machine to you. Did they still wear I lead thought... vests when they did it? No, they like left the room and and they didn't give me a lead vest, but it's okay. Emily's already pregnant, so I guess I don't need to worry about that anymore. But uh... <laughs> already shot your shot, right? So yeah. So they found out, they did the x-ray, nothing was broken, thank God, and it was just a severe sprain. So 
I didn't get to work on Saturday or Sunday, which it's bittersweet because like I don't like working the weekend, but I mean also it's money. I like the money that comes in, so like yeah. So I mean I kind of felt shitty about not working because now my paycheck's going to be lighter and I don't like that. But I mean, at least I got to sit at home. Saturday was tough because I was I was on crutches like for the weekend and Emily was at work. So I was like by myself and like I couldn't put I still couldn't put any weight on my foot. So like, you know how hard it is to like try to make food and stuff when you're on crutches and like, yeah. And so that wasn't very fun. Um, so yeah, Saturday I pretty much just lounged around and sat in the recliner and yeah, so, um, Sunday we ended up going to Brookfield, Wisconsin, because there's this place called Bye Bye Baby, which is basically uh, Babies Are Us, but they're not around anymore, so it's a baby store, and Emily, there was some stuff that Emily wanted to get, and so, like, mainly a nursery chair, but she wanted to sit in them first, you know, she didn't just want to order one, and it's a very important purchase. I respect and that. I respect that. There's certain so, things that you want to sit in first before you buy them. And so we found it. We found one and we bought one. And uh, she ended up uh, registering there too because for everything that's not purchased on her registry after the baby's born or after the baby shower, um, we get like a certain amount off. So, I mean, why not, right? Smart. Mm-hmm. Um. So then we also, like, Brookfield is right next to Waukesha, and this uh, place is actually on the same road as Cops. So it was, like, a couple-mile drive. So we ended up going to Cops Frozen Custard, got some burgers, and uh, we split uh, Turtle Sunday, which is pretty good. But the burgers... They weren't the best cop burgers I've ever had. I was a little, because I haven't had it in a year and a half. So I was a little disappointed in that. But, I mean, they still were good. They just weren't up to cop standard. You know, like, I hold them all the way up at the top. Like, I put them on a pedestal and, like, yeah, they, they didn't achieve the gold with all the Olympic, the Olympics that are going on. They did not get the gold medal this weekend. But No gold. Um, it was still good. It was nice going there again. I really like enjoy like the scenery of that place and like how it's old school with uh, everyone wearing the white uniforms and the white paper hats and the white aprons and you can actually watch them make the food and it's classic. It's classic like ice cream parlor feel. Sort of sort of just sit in your car. Uh, we had outside. There was actually a table in the shade, so it worked out pretty nice. Wow, um, lucky you guys. Yeah, and there was also a bird that, like, came up and was eating, like, like pieces of bun that were on the ground and stuff like that. It was missing a foot. It was really weird. But, wait, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Wait, you're, wait, it was a one-footed bird? Yeah. So it was just hopping yeah. around? Yeah, well, I mean, it was still hopping around on both legs, but it was like the one, the leg without the foot was like a peg leg. It was weird. <laughs> it was hopping around. You saw a stump legged bird. Yes. Yes. Way to bury the fucking lead, Diesel. I don't give a shit about the burgers. Why didn't you tell me that before? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I mean, that is a first. I mean, it's two weekends in a row where I have uh, crazy bird stories. One with the parakeet last week and now the one footed bird. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, we came home, uh, as we thought to the Johnson Creek outlet mall, at this point I didn't go in because I, I did get my, uh, knee scooter that was at my parents' house, um, and I tried to knee scooter around Bye Bye Baby, but it just was not working out, like, I don't, it was, like, hurting my knee, it didn't hurt my knee before, but I was also... I didn't weigh as much as I do now the last time I used that. So, I mean, that, that probably has something to do with it. But, uh, yeah, I was in a world of hurt. Um, so, Emily went into the store at the Johnson Creek uh, Outlet Mall and I just kind of chilled in the car and did a lot of people watching, which 
this is very entertaining sometimes. And like Sunday was a good people watching day, especially since the store she went to was right next to the Crocs store. And like the people that shop there are, they're definitely enigmas. So charismatic. I don't know about that, but enigmas. Um, uh, Monday night. Went to the store. Emily wouldn't let me walk. You know, like I can walk now. I'm not crutching or scooting, but uh, she made me use one of those um, like electric scooter things, like the old people use, and that was not fun. I did not like that. I never want to do that ever again. But uh, really weird. It was really weird. Um. Last night, I didn't bowl, but I came to bowling and watched you guys not do very well, but yeah, it was still a good time. Um, so like I the said, eventful, lack focus. Uh, like I said, it was eventful slash uneventful. Um, don't think I watched any movies. Not that I can think of off the top of my head. So, yeah, I guess uh, there you have it. That was uh, my rewind. Yeah. Wow. That is a pretty damn eventful week for you, Diesel, without actually really doing anything because you broke your foot. Not You didn't break it or anything, but I'm saying you messed your foot up so you couldn't do a lot. Yeah, it sucked. Yeah. Well, I'm glad, to, as I said before multiple times, glad to hear you didn't actually re-break your foot or anything like that. I know how oh, terrifying. It sucked. Because we got that Milwaukee trip coming up in less than a month. And, yeah, I don't want to go to Milwaukee with a broken foot again. Oh, that would have been rough. That would have been really rough. Yes, super glad for that for my own personal reasons as well. Because I don't have to worry about your ass. Because if you had a broken foot, then I would have to concern myself with how is we going to get Diesel around all week. Uh, but, yes, so I guess it's my turn for the top rope rewind. Uh, so, for my week, let's see. I haven't really done a lot in the like way I had my general work shifts. Uh, last Thursday, I did go to the Mallards game uh, for Allison's, like her work retreat. I guess retreat's not the really good word because we live in Madison, but it was like a work company outing. They paid for it. We got a private box seat and it was actually the private box seat that the Mallard mascot actually zip lines out of. So that was kind of cool. So we were up there and actually got to watch him. And I'm gonna, not going to lie to you. We were making jokes. We're like, hey, someone should knock him out and take the costume. And then we can do the zip line. And then the minute after he got strapped into the zip line and sat on just the fucking ledge of this thing. And I saw how the zip line was constructed. I was like, you know what? Actually, I'm cool. We're going to we're gonna let the Mallard mascot do the zip line. I want no part of it. But they didn't die. Sidebar. Sidebar. Did you know? The Mallard mascot had got stolen. I did not. Yeah, I just heard this on the radio this last week because uh, Vern, the guy who owns the Mallards, he always makes his rounds like I think every like Tuesday or Thursday, uh, local radio stations, and talks about like the upcoming like events because the Mallards are always doing something. They're having some guest. Um, yeah, he's talking about how the the head got stolen. And he's like, yeah, it was funny, but, like, whoever did it, just bring it back. Like, we want it back. Like, they've been using old, like, mascot heads, like, throughout the years. They had one, like, one night they did the old Madison Muskie <laughs> mascot. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, yeah, he's like, that's been in storage for, like, 25 years. That thing will smell horrible. <laughs> oh, that's fucking nasty. Yeah, the muskies were, like, around before the mallards. Yeah, it's a long, long time ago. That's before our time. Yeah. No, it wasn't before our time, but, like, before, like, we could go to these games, like, on our own. But Yeah. Yeah, know. so that was, that was my sidebar. I was wondering, did you, what, uh, what mallard head was he wearing, do you know? I guess I didn't really take the time to look at it. Uh, I'm just wondering. Yeah, he was, I mean, he was definitely a mallard. So he was a male mallard. It wasn't Daisy or whatever the female mallard mascot's name is. No, I don't know. 
Damn it. Well, I have a bunch of pictures of it. So now after this podcast, I'm going to go back and look and I will tell you later. But yeah, besides that, that was my Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I worked. It was probably the slowest weekend I've had in a very long time, which kind of makes sense. It's usually around this time that the you know weeks get a little slow. It's a summer doldrum. A lot of people are out of town. They're you know taking vacations, all that kind of good stuff. But yeah, besides that, work was good. Uh, for what I've watched this week, I watched the season finale of Misfits and Magic from Dimension 20, which was quite good with Abrea being the DM. And then today, the new season debuted. It's called The Seven. They didn't debut yet, but the trailer debuted. That's coming out in August, so I'm super excited about that. I also, I don't know why, I really love British TV. I've said it a lot of times. I watch a lot of British TV. But Taskmaster, which is a great uh, British TV show with Peter Davies as the host and Alex Horn, who like designed it and everything like that. It's just a whole bunch of British comedians. They have to do like random tasks. And I don't know. I think it's fucking hilarious. They added all the seasons or series to YouTube. So I have been rewatching every episode of Taskmaster for like the past week. And I don't know. I think it's fucking hilarious. I'm currently in series six. Just about to finish up series six. And I, I don't know. Allison thinks I'm an idiot. Because uh, I don't know. British humor really makes me chuckle. I don't know if it makes everyone else chuckle. But I love it. So you can check it out on YouTube. Taskmaster. They have their own YouTube. Check it out. Every episode's on there. And uh, what else have I done with my week? I don't know. I continued playing XCOM 2 on the highest difficulty on Iron Man. And once again, the game's a dirty fucking cheater. Dirty fucking cheater game, and I get so furious at that game, It, I'm going to break a controller. I almost did last night when I, no, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm, I'm just, the game cheats, the game 100% cheats, and it makes no fucking sense, but I'm going to beat it. I don't care how much of my sanity it takes, or if it takes multiple controllers, I'm going to fucking beat it. Because I hate it so much right now, though, but I'm going to win. Going to fucking win, Diesel. Uh, and then luck. I did. Sorry, what? Good luck. Thank you. I'm going to need it. I did also restart Final Fantasy VIII just to give myself something because that's probably my favorite Final Fantasy game of all time. And once again, you can at me if you want. It's the best of all of them. Because I know that game so well that it's just something I can play and it can make me feel better about myself. Well, XCOM 2 makes me feel like a you know, piece of garbage. Final Fantasy VIII's that, like, halo in the side that goes, Chad, you're still great at things. Well, XCOM 2 goes, fuck you, Chad, you're a piece of garbage. But yeah, really, it's all I've done with my week. I hang out with Allison, and I play video games. I'm not very maybe, interested anymore. Maybe you should start playing the show again. So you really want me to, like, probably break my TV then as well? Yeah. Cool. Well, when I throw my controller through my TV, you're the one who's explained to Allison why that happened. Got you. You know, I got you. Like I said earlier, I'll just tell her to calm her tits. <laughs> it's a good thing she doesn't listen to this podcast. All right. With that, though, I think that will wrap <laughs> up the Top Rope Rewind. Whoop. Let's crack on to segment number two. And this is where you get the happenings and goings done. Oh my god, I fucking skipped a segment. That's not this segment. The second segment is... T-shirt time. So what you rocking this week, Diesel? Well, I got my pro wrestling crate. Um, Yesterday, apparently where I live, it's days behind Chad because he got his before the weekend. And I got mine yesterday, but hey, it came in time for the podcast, so I'm wearing a brand new t-shirt. It is a Bruiser, Bruiser Brody t-shirt. Uh, We're killing it tonight, <laughs> Diesel. We're absolutely fucking killing it. Um, I don't really know how to explain it. There's some, uh, I think, Japanese calligraphy on here. Um, yeah, I've never seen... Uh, Bruiser Brody match in my life. I know his story and I know about uh, how he died and everything like that, but uh, 
As far as like actually seeing him wrestle, I've never seen a Bruiser Brody match. But I will rep his merch because it's actually a pretty cool shirt. Looks like a crazy guy. And I like it. Um, and I got this shirt, like I said, from the Pro Wrestling Crate, which I will talk about right now because uh, yeah, next month's crate, which is called the August Crate, because they're actually getting pretty uh, – Creative with their names, if you can't tell. Um, it uh, features John Moxley, the Nasty Boys, Brian Myers, Lex Luger, Lanny Poffo, Brutus Beefcake, the barber, you know, and a special critical botch item featuring Cole Cabana, Orange Cassidy, Leva Bates, Brandon Color, and more. I bet you it's a DVD because that's what it always seems to be when there's multiple people in it. So. What? Yeah, it says right in front of me on my screen that they have 81 crates left for this month. So if you want to subscribe, you should probably do it pretty quick because 81s in the grand scheme of things is not that many. So hopefully there's still crates left by the time you hear this. Sure there will be, but you better hurry up and uh, sign up for years now. Getting it while the getting's good. But yes, definitely subscribe to PW Crate. And when you do, tell them you from the top rope sent you. Because you know what? Maybe they'll sponsor this podcast because they're a bunch of cool people. And we have been pimping their stuff for a really fucking long time. Years. Uh, years. This week, though, for my t-shirt time, I am rocking once again another new t-shirt, as I always do. This t-shirt comes from once upon a t.net and this t-shirt is from the fantastic or it's inspired by the fantastic loki marvel show from disney plus and it says be the best variant of yourself with miss minutes on it and it's in orange and you know what it's just fucking great i really love it and this is one of their daily tees so once upon a t.net is pretty cool they do five different groups of four T-shirts each week that you can get. They're available for the entire week. Each one is $13 each, or you can get, like, the group of this fandom T-shirts for, like, I think it's $44. But whatever. So they do all of these. But then they also do a new daily T-shirt each and every day that you'd only get for 24 hours at a discount. And that's where I got this one. So it's really hard to just, like, say what – you know, once upon t.net has for t-shirts because they have once again fucking everything. See, folks, this is why Chad has so many goddamn t-shirts because I can't help myself and I keep finding all these great websites that have all these cool t-shirts. And then once I see them, I have to have them. So if you want a cool t-shirt like this, go to once upon a t.net and check them out. This week's uh, like fandoms are Star Wars. Uh, they have a Loki set, they have Metroid, uh, they have horror movies. It's a really cool week this week, actually, so check them out. I'm actually holding myself back, because I, I, can't, I can't keep doing it, folks. Can't keep buying all these t-shirts. Then I do anyway, so probably have a new t-shirt next week. Oh, I do. Don't worry. But check out onceuponat.net. But with that, that will wrap up. T-shirt time. Now with that, it's time to crack on to the segment that I talked about earlier because I screwed up. It's now that time of the week where you get all the happenings and goings on for all of your favorite podcasts from this little blue orb that we spin on in this crazy universe we live in that cover everything from pro wrestling, from pop culture to podcasting itself. To video games, to Dungeons and Dragons, to football, to UFC, and everything in between. It's time for Visionaries Global Media News. All right, Diesel, coffee break time for this, Chad. So why don't you hit us with the news? Starting off with Magnificent Matt Willis at the Mad Attack UK. This week's news, Dungeons and Junkies double bills continue with the 
this Friday, seeing Matt continue to DM Edenoy's season two finale. We're still on the fucking finale. Didn't we just talk about this last week? What, You're right. Okay, what constitutes as a finale for Dungeons and Dragons? Like, okay, so we were on the penultimate episodes of the finale. It was a two-parter, honestly, for the penultimate. Which really, it should only one of them have been called the Pet Ultimate. That's when you start getting on this trade of coming at Matt for his naming things. And then the finale was also two parts. Which also, that makes a lot of sense. That happens a lot of times in TV shows where the finale is two parts and split up. Yeah, but sometimes the finale will end with the cliffhanger and the second part will be the premiere of the next season. Whatever. So is this actually the last episode of season two? Yes. Okay, you can confirm this. Like, I won't. I mean, I haven't heard it, week. but I'm like, I'm, I, I'm, I'm ninety percent positive. I won't be reading the news next week and seeing season finale for season two again. This is driving me crazy. I swear to God, like the season ended for season two like eight months ago. But <laughs> anyways, the season two finale sees Chad, Alex. Carrie and Caitlin, they are joined by special guest player Chris from Chris Talks Games as the world of Edenoy changes forever. And of course, next Monday sees Chad back in the chair to send the team of Alex, Carrie, Caitlin, and Matt back into more hellish adventures in the world of his own creation entitled Escape from Yolfam. Is that better? You know what? Got like a little Nordic feel to it. I'm fine with it. I don't even care. Yeah. <laughs> okay, like the like, question begs to be asked. Is this the season finale? No, it's not the season finale of Escape from Wolfam. Okay, okay. This episode will be the see the gang trying to escape their way through the hospital that they have found themselves trapped in. Okay, well, that's a nice little teaser. Be sure to check it out this Friday. No, nope, next Monday. Monday. <laughs> I knew it was one of them. It's double bills. I know. Yeah, whatever. Chris Talks Games is back on Saturday with the man himself bringing you all his takes on the news, what he's been playing, and of course, his subject of the week, where he follows up his last episode with the second part of his topic of games based on films, with this episode looking at the good examples. I don't know. I, I read... Exactly what it says. I don't. Is the good example something I don't know about? Is it a game? No, he's saying the ones that are actually good. Because last time you looked at the bad ones. Oh, that makes sense. I just read it weird. Thank you for uh, clearing it up for me. This has been this has been a rough new segment to start out. It's not looking great for us tonight, folks. And of course, check out the Dungeons and Junkies Instagram for new D and J artwork and the Game Junkies plays. And Chris Reactor YouTube channels for the latest gameplay. Chris has been playing some Zelda Skyward Sword and some Pokemon Unite. Whilst Matt, Alex, and Carrie have some more Hitman elusive targets and other gameplay coming as well. Nice. Moving on to Meg's quite. Funny Diesel, you can follow him at Podfather Megs on Twitter. This week on Five Rounds, the UFC is back at the apex with Uriah Hall looking to move up the middleweight ranks by beating Sean Strickland. Tune in to hear the action. Nice, another easy week for good old Diesel. Megs, damn it. Now it's time... For some band from ringside. This is band from ringside. This week, the boys discuss it, the summer of Cena. I'm, I'm guessing they forgot. Is is it the summer of Cena? Wait, no, I don't know. I'm confused. Let me start over. I'm just gonna read it as it's written. 
Maybe you can uh, make it out for me like you did earlier. This week, the boys discuss it. The summer of Cena is over. If the summer of Cena is over. Before it starts as Roman Reigns declines John Cena's challenge, the review of New Japan Pro Wrestling Wrestle Grand Slam card, Raw goes back to some questionable booking. That's for damn sure. NXT TakeOver 36 starting to take shape. Fight for the Fallen recap from AEW as well. This podcast is available every Friday for iOS and Android devices. Wherever you listen to your podcast, please leave them a five-star review on iTunes, Podchaser, or Stitcher. And remember to listen, share, subscribe, repeat, baby! Had some uh, nice chats with uh, Jason about uh, Loki earlier today. Nice! Told me he finished it and told me he liked it, but he liked uh, uh, Falcon and the Winter Snowman the best. Hey, that's that's respectable. Falcon and the Winter Snowman was probably the best of all the series, besides Loki. All right, moving on to uh, Chain Wrestling, episode 35, live number three, Double Pay Sunday. Uh, bumper episode of Chain Wrestling this week as the poll ended in a draw. So both matches are covered, plus dad jokes from listeners, Olympics talk, and more. Catch Chain Wrestling live via Radio Techers on Monday nights and check out the show's social media for more details. Simply search at Chain Wrestling on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. SJP, still on hiatus. So we'll keep you updated when that comes back. Damn right. No news from Radio Techers except for the news I just read of Chain Wrestling being on Radio Techers every Monday night, which is confusing. But they didn't send in their news for like the fourth straight week. So hopefully everything's going good with Tanner and Mags and apparently Matt. They still do it live on Sundays, usually, I believe, on YouTube. Hmm. Where did you go, RJ? Where did you come <laughs> from? Where did you go? Where did you come <laughs> from, RJ Joe? Um, I know that I messaged him, but, like, I am not. There it is. It was right in front of my face. Says Justin and RJ are ranting about the July 29th, 1996 edition of Monday Nitro. That is on this week's episode of the Ringside Rant. Which uh, this week, the um, Twitter handle for Ringside Rant is at underscore Ringside Rant. Cool. What will it be next week? I guess we'll have to tune in to find out. And <laughs> finally, find out. their new Twitter. Finally, account. got the Brain Buster Boys. We can talk about the Brain Buster Boys, and I can finish. I know uh, I didn't listen to the interview, but I know the interview came out with the people that uh, were the driving force behind the X Men animated series. I've heard a lot of good stuff about this interview, and just. Like, times are hard right now. I just, yeah. I haven't listened to it. I didn't get to walk at all this week. Usually I listen to the Brain Buster Boys on my walks during the week. I haven't been able to get out and get on a walk, so I'll try to get around to it. But uh, from what I hear, did you listen to it yet? I did. It's fucking phenomenal. Yeah, I've heard really good things, and the Brain Buster Boys are killing it along with all the other podcasts on this network. So everybody should be proud. Damn right. Check it out. And also make sure you give the uh, creators a follow so that they can get a check mark. And uh, then Beaumont will have to cartwheels down whatever large road they live in. Because Beaumont apparently makes that claim all the time and he never has to pay it off. I'd really love him to have to pay this one off. So everybody follow them. Do it. It's X Men. It's like X M. It's X Men Tense. I can't remember what it is right now. I'm sorry. Whatever. Look it up. Find them. Listen to the interview. You'll know. 
All right, time for my portion of the news. Kick it off with the MGB Wrestling Podcast. MGB this week reviewed the return of UEW Wrestling to Virginia. And hopefully next week, we will be reviewing how VGM fave Benjamin Banks performed in BCW's Liberty Lottery 2021. For the Good Cop, Bad Cop Wrestling Podcast, GCBC will be joined this week by SM Media early Sunday morning for a late slash up to the minute recording of GCBC. And for my podcast, we're going to crack right on to everybody's favorite time of the week where we get to find out all the great wrestling coming up here in the Midwest because it's time for the Midwestern Wrestling Roundup. Yeehaw! Let's get them, partners. All right, we now turn it over to that Hawaiian shirt wearing, visor sporting, beer guzzling, the Midwestern Prince of Positivity, and all around great guy, our Midwestern wrestling correspondent, Tom, for the news. What up, High Flyers? Your Midwest Wrestling Roundup for the week of July 26, 2021. And a hot July rolls into an even hotter August. First, we have Mondo Lucha August 1st at the Summer Grounds, Summer Grounds Fest with Taco Fest. And also, the rumors are confirmed. Return at Tanner Hall November 21st, 24th. As I type this, there are only 110 or 100 general admission seats available. Next, we have Zello Pro also returning to the legendary Turner Hall Sunday, August 1st with the Ballroom Brawl, featuring many local favorites and former Invader in the Zebra Stripes, Perch. ACW returns Friday, August 6th with All-Star Rumble at the Oshkosh Masonic Lodge with the main event of World Class Pain versus the Players Club in a no, dis- no disqualification, no count-out match. Next. The mighty AAW returns Saturday, August 7th at 115 Bourbon Street in Marionette Park, Illinois, with their show, August show, Savages and Kings. Can't make it live? You can purchase on Fight TV. Highlighted by the return of AEW star high and high five Tom favorite, Eddie Kingston. Our CCW is back with their seventh anniversary show on Friday, August 13th at the Roy L. Vingers American Legion Post 52 in La Crosse, Wisconsin. In legendary Bruce City Wrestling, running a few shows throughout the month again, but the main show is the Elks Lodge in Waukesha, Friday, August 13th, called Star Cage, with every match featured in a steel cage. Our boy Simon's promotion is back with Frozen Tundra Wrestling, Saturday, August 14th, at Johnny's Lounge in Beaver Dam with a show called Showdown. On the card, TW3, Pitstain, and the Pitbulls at McGuire. Huh, that's two pits in a row. Next, we've got First Wrestling back August 15th with Blood, Sweat, and Beers 3 at the Bauhaus Brew Labs in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Zoe also has several shows this month, but their main show is August 21st, and it's called Back It Up at the Northside Barbecue in Oregon, Oregon, Illinois, featuring, you guessed it, WWE legend Rikishi. Warrior Wrestling is back August 21st, back at Chicago Heights, featuring New Japan Pro Wrestling star Jay White. After taking a month off, WPW returns with all bets are off at the watering, watering hole in Green Bay, Wisconsin, Friday, August 27th. And fourth Wall is back, baby, with their debut show at Buena Vista in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Friday, August 27th, featuring Jake Something, Rohit, and Rohit Raju against some of our local favorites. Want tickets? Hit up friend of VFTR, Joe, for tickets. Also, AEW Dynamite is making its first appearance in Milwaukee August 25th at the University of Milwaukee Arena with when there's a rumor of VFTR and Brain Buster, Brain Buster Boys reunion with a little high five times sprinkled on top. Also, we have Premier Pro Wrestling with that runs every Saturday in August in Woodstock, Illinois at their Premier Pro Wrestling Studio where my man Moondog Murray appears every week. Tickets are limited, so I suggest you get them ahead of time. And then, last but never ever least, we have ICW Milwaukee with their show of the year, The Insane Eight, August 29th at the Elks Lodge in Waukesha, Wisconsin. How they're going to pull this off, I don't know. 
I will announce the full card in the coming weeks, but but we will have fav, um, favorite Schlack, Matthew Justice, Neil Diamond Cutter, and whose house? Oren's house. Tickets are going quick, so hit up this if you want some tickets. I will be at several of these shows, wear my Hawaiian shirt, sport my visor, and guzzling some beer. So if you see me, stop by and say hi, and your next drink is on me. Let it or unlet it. Also, if any promoters have anything they'd like Tom to put over, tweet me at High Five Tom. That's number five, not five spelled out. Lastly, a friendly reminder from High Five Tom and Visionaries Globe Media to all fans, remember that all cards are subject to change. And before I bid everyone adieu, once again, I want to thank Chad with a little drop there for taking time out of your another busy recording date or record this with me. See you next week, High Flyers. Quick shout out to my man, you man. Gonna miss you, buddy. And that will wrap up the Midwestern Wrestling Roundup. Watch. Yeehaw. You're welcome, partners. All right, Diesel. View from the top rope and Visionaries Global Media News. Well, from you from the top rope, you all, you high flyers have asked for it. So back by popular demand, it's high five, Tom. When? That's TBD. But he will be on here maybe next week or the week after. But your friend and mine, high five, Tom, will be back to do a round of top rope topics with us in the coming weeks. I've been dropping the ball. I still haven't listened to that one podcast you sent me. I, like, I forgot all about it. Um, I should probably, should probably, like I said, set a reminder on my phone so I remember to do this. Maybe tomorrow I'll get around to it. I'm sorry. If you listen to this podcast, um, it's nothing personal. I'm just an idiot. We'll get to you. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. So, uh Yeah. On that note, if you'd like to join the network, send your podcast to visionariesglowmedia at gmail.com. Or even better yet, probably just hit me up at diesel underscore VFTR. Let me know where I can find your podcast to listen to it. Um, And bug the hell out of me if I don't respond soon enough because, yeah, I'm just an idiot. (laughs) <laughs> so that's what you do, and uh, you can join the network, and Chad will tell you all the places you will be heard. Oh, yeah. You can be heard on such podcasting platforms as Stitcher, Spotify, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Sound. Oh, I said SoundCloud, right? I just so fucking many. I just keep repeating myself because all you need to do is type in the term visionaries global media. And you will find us on a podcasting platform that you enjoy. All these great podcasts. I'm serious. And whatever podcasting platform you're using, make sure you're like, commenting, sharing, subscribing, reviewing, whatever the hell their algorithm calls you to do to make sure that more and more people are hearing all these great podcasts. Because we've got everything. I'm telling you, people. From football to Dungeons and Dragons to pro wrestling to just pop culture to just, you know, chatting about random shit. We got it all for you. These people need to be heard. So, you know, like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll say it again. Do it, folks. That's what you're supposed to do. And make sure that if you want to join the network, hit Diesel up, and he will get around to it. And we'll get you on the network while they're getting still damn good. But with that, folks, that is all the news that is fit to listen to. All right, it is once again Top Rope Topics time because we only do the Mystery Brain Buster a week once a month now. So the term, I guess not the term, the subject, pro wrestling, once again won out with a massive victory and a huge, like, it was a late surge. It was tied at the very end of the day, and then suddenly there was a surge of, like, 15 to 20 votes that took pro wrestling over the top. But yes, let's hit that sound effect so we can just jump right into it, folks. So, monkeys in the back, hit it! Top row topics, top row topics, top row topics, top row topics. 
As that sound effect tells you, it is now time for Top Rope Topics. And I said it before, Pro Wrestling won out. And thanks again. This was once again now our biggest response to the poll. So, folks, thank you for voting. And you know what's going to be a good time talking to Pro Wrestling? We always love a good Pro Wrestling week. So, Diesel, I was the one who went first last time. So that means, buddy, it's your time to kick it off. So, my topic is a broader view of pro wrestling. I don't have uh, anything in particular. I just have a lot of things that I want to talk about. So, we'll probably be jumping around. But uh, I'm going to start out with, I saw this meme last week. And I didn't send it to anybody, so I can't find it. But uh, it was basically the – it was two pictures, and the top picture was a bunch of kids getting along, and it said AEW, Impact, uh, New Japan, NWA. And then the bottom picture had a little kid punching another kid in the face, and it said WWE and NXT. And, like, I mean, it's hilarious to think about, like, all these companies – that I think have been more successful in the last year, even with ones that have been shut down for a good chunk of the last year, I still consider them more successful than WWE. And the reason is, is because they're working with other companies. And I just, it, it just blows my mind how Vince McMahon owns NXT. Like, just because Triple H runs it, Vince McMahon is, like, it's his product, but he wants to bury it because he's so petty that they couldn't beat uh, Dynamite on Wednesday nights. And so, like, the their champion, he's like, oh, whatever, he doesn't matter to me. I'm going to bury him. And, like, there are reports that originally this week on Raw, Karrion Cross was supposed to go up against Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy was supposed to beat him again. Like, <laughs> I just so what? I okay. Ahead. Sorry, I don't mean to cut you off there, but no, what ahead. I don't get is I think I saw that same meme, and I'm in a few like big like uh, wrestling Facebook or Twitter like group chats where just there's a whole bunch of like people that are constantly talking. And I have to mute them a lot of the time because there's so many people talking all at once. But I always pop in and like read through it and shit, and. The one defense that I get or I see so many times about the WWE is everyone always say, well, what everyone always forgets is WWE is a business. What the fuck does that have to do with anything? Good business would be to work with these other fucking companies at this point and make more fucking money. Like, what in the fuck are you on about with, oh, it's, it's WWE's a business. That's why they don't want to work with any of these other companies. So what are the rest of these companies? Are they fucking dancers in the sky? What are they? The fuck are you on about, you fucking idiots? I don't, I don't exactly. fucking understand that argument at all. It just, just annoys the fuck out of me. And I've just seen it more and more recently. That So are all the rest of these companies. But they understand that, once again, a rising tide raises all ships yeah like that argument is easily like you can shut it down easily like <laughs> tony khan is a multi-millionaire bringing in millions of dollars through his company which is another word for business like you think he's just doing this just for shits and grins and like no, he wants to put out the best product out there so he can make the most money possible. When it comes down to it, like, Tony Khan is probably just as greedy as Vince McMahon, but he's doing it in a different way. Like, Vince McMahon's set in his ways, and, he, like, by all means, he can be because he's been running this corporation for so long that it just – People are just giving you free billions of dollars. Like, they want your product. He doesn't have to do anything to make it better, and people will still hand him. Here's a go. Here you go. Five years, $1 billion. There you go. Like, 
you have the WWE Network? Well, we want that. We're going to definitely, like, take it and chop it up and, like, all the stuff that was good about it. Well, we're going to not have that anymore. We'll give you a billion dollars for it. Like, it just, yeah. So, yeah, that argument of WWE being a business is not a good one. And, yeah. And I, bringing that up. I do completely also agree that Vince McMahon's own pettiness towards NXT as a whole hurts his company because he has so much, like all of these call-ups in general, because they spend enough time in NXT, have such a great, rich backstory, all like already built into their character that if Vince McMahon wasn't like, you know what, fuck NXT, I hate everything about it, that he could just be like, yeah, I'm going to bring these guys up and we're going to continue their tale. Or we're going to, you know, everything they said in NXT, they're going to go, fuck that, I was doing it for the fans, and it was all a game. And then totally change them. But they just never endorse what actually happened in NXT nine out of ten times, and that's what makes it so annoying for us, like, hardcore fans. There was a time, too, where they had to. Like, they didn't have the star power so they bring up certain people like Charlotte is a great example of this. Like Charlotte was originally on NXT. Like, it's not like she was like main roster raw women's champion. Like from the beginning, she got brought up same with Sasha Banks and Bailey and Becky Lynch. <clears throat> you can even go back to Roman Reigns was NXT. And now they have, in Vince Man's eyes, they have the people in place for, like, the way he likes to run his business by having one, like, big star. And that's all you need is just one guy, the guy, and which is not true at all because, like, if you look at other companies, they have many, like, big stars. And, like, even if you even look at NXT, the – main event scene is bigger because it feels like anybody could be NXT champion. It feels like Kyle O'Reilly, Adam Cole, Johnny Gargano, like Ciampa, like the list goes on and on and on. Any of those guys on any given day can walk in and like they already feel like they are a champion. Like you don't get that in the main roster and stuff like that. So by Vince McMahon doing what he's doing, he does hurt his own product. But at the same time, in a weird, like reverse psychology way, he makes NXT look that much better. Like, I don't know. It, it's weird. It, it really is. But like, I, it's, it's crazy to me. I just think that with them being able to, if they were able to work with other promotions, they would have such a better product. If they could get out of their own way. Like, I watched Raw again for the second week in a row. And so, like, I got uh, that about enough of Raw as I can, as much of Raw as I can take. Like, if you want to compare the main event from Raw to uh, Fire Fest Night 2 last week, or even compared to this week's NXT, that was trash main event. Like, no offense to Charlotte or Nikki Cross, but was not a good match. And it wasn't deserving of your A show main event. Like, like they had, that was the main event from last week, technically, because Nikki Cross cashed in. That's going to be, like, the main event for next week. It's like, they do not know how to write shows. It's just, like, when I was doing the news for uh, Band from Ringside, they, like, talked about Raw's questionable booking. It was bad. Like, as a whole, like, questions I have are why were the... Viking Raiders, why did they get another tag team title shot? Like, they lost again at uh, Money in the Bank. I don't even remember if they won in their six-man tag last week. I think they did, but that, that doesn't really, shouldn't qualify you to get another shot. And if they were going to get another shot, like, I don't know that I complain about 50-50 booking a lot, but, like, it seems like this would have been the time to do it 
and have them win. Like, because it seems like they're trying to break up Almas and AJ Styles or trying to do something. It just it doesn't make sense. Their booking does not make any sense. Then you have Keith Lee, like I said last week, and you argued with it, but now like it's like even more clear he lost to Karrion Cross, which happened on NXT, but when it happened on NXT, it felt like a big deal. Here you had Karrion Cross just losing to Jeff Hardy last week, and it like hurts Keith Lee's character so much, it's like you there's like nothing you can do with him right now. It's just I feel bad for the guy because he's one of the most talented people on the entire roster, and like they just write him off. I don't know how they jobbed out now, and I know that he didn't. They were both great matches. Don't get me wrong. I enjoyed both the Bobby Lashley and the Karrion Cross matches from Keith Lee. Don't get me wrong, but still. How does Keith Lee lose twice in a row after being gone so long and the just every person in the WWE Universe is calling for him to come back and he loses twice? Like, what kind of storyline are you trying to tell with him? I I I told you, it was a mistake to put him up against Bobby Lashley on his return match. They shouldn't have done that. He should have faced somebody where he could have won. I would have been fine with him, like, going up against uh, Sheamus again. You know, I wouldn't, like, because if he would have beat Sheamus, it wouldn't, uh, like, hurt Sheamus. Because Sheamus' character is built, like, to get beat and still get over and get everyone else over. It just, I don't know, it's just... And then another big issue I have is for both the major titles, Universal and WWE title, the stories are copy and paste. They went out on SmackDown. Roman Reigns came out and he declined John Cena's challenge. Well, what happened on Raw this week? Bobby Lashley came out and declined Goldberg's challenge. It's the same thing. It's a part-timer coming in, challenging the champion. And both of them have managers and they declined. It's just like do something different. Like it's I did I, I don't I don't know. But then you look at NXT. It's it feels like it's not even part of the WWE. Like like pro, for their product, it is way better product. Definitely feels more like independence. And like I don't miss episodes of NXT because. I actually enjoy watching NXT. I enjoy the stories that they have. They don't have the same matches every single week. They spread out storylines so not everything is on TV every single week. And they build stuff. For like instance, like the Cameron Grimes and LA Knight storyline. Those, <laughs> those vignettes are awesome. Quick sidebar. Was this week's the best one that they've done, the golf game? Because I think it yes, was. It was, because it started out like like you knew it was going to be good because the first thing they did was have Cameron Grimes saying, I'm washing your balls. Like, yeah. I mean, like, come on, who's not going to laugh at that? And, like, him in those boots with those golf socks were hilarious. Like, there were just so many good things. Then he had the a Million Dollar Man cameo. And the end, when he gets that hole-in-one, where uh, he... <laughs> hey, shout-out to the Grizzled Young Veterans as well. For... That was awesome, too. Like, that, like... And see, that's another thing. Like, they don't do that on Raw and SmackDown anymore, where they have something that, like, weaves its way through the entire show. And that was nice, because they come back from commercial, they go back to this. And, like, that spread out, like, for a long time during the show. And every time they went back to it, it was good. I enjoy these guys together. And I can't wait because you know they're going to end up being a tag team. And I'm down for that. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm sure in the end, Cameron Grimes has to get his comeuppance. But they'll be a tag team, and it'll be fun. It'll, it will almost be like, in a weird way, the Miz and Mizdow. Like, he's going to have to do what uh, L.A. Knight tells him to do because he's a butler. But, like, it's the, – I mean, the best part was he didn't even realize that uh, he hit L.A. Knight in the nuts and then hit him in the head with the backswing. Like, it was it was good stuff. I really enjoyed that. 
But then, I mean, NXT has its flaws, too. Like, uh, I really feel the Samoa Joe as, like, the enforcer character was rushed. And I get that Karrion Cross is now on the main roster and everything like that, so they have to do it now. But I feel like this story has more legs, you know? Like, it's been, like, a month, if that, maybe. And, like, it's just... He's already uh, an active wrestler on the NXT roster, which is where I wanted this to go in the long run. I just feel like it could have been a longer build to get there. I mean, like I said, I understand Karrion Cross isn't going to be in NXT for much longer. And it probably means that Samoa Joe is going to be not only the first two-time NXT champion, but the first three-time NXT champion, which... I'm not mad about that either because uh, Small Joe's the man. But, uh, yeah, like, so, I mean, this week's NXT was good. And, like, I'm excited for NXT going forward. Like, NXT 36 is going to be awesome. They're having the Walter Dragunov match on there, which I think was a great call. Um, they're, I like that Dakota Kai – turned on Raquel Gonzalez. Like, there's so much good. They're still having, uh, I don't know if this will be on uh, the takeover. It probably will be, but uh, Adam Cole versus Kyle Riley, because those matches are always epic. He did the Uranagi on the stairs, just like he did to him. Like, like they actually know how to tell stories, and they know how to drag them out and not, like, overdo it. So, like, it's crazy. And just, like... I have a lot more excitement for wrestling in the last few weeks because of where it's going, and I I fear that it's going to be short-lived and we're going to be back in the Thunderdome era very, very shortly. Yep. But I'm trying to enjoy as much of in-person wrestling as I can because, like, it's more fun. Even watching Raw – is more fun just because there's people there and there it feels like there's this energy that you didn't have before and so i don't know it's but the main roster is dog shit like it, i think i think the best way and the most like just defining factor of how terrible the main roster is at most times is the main roster's women's division is like, absolutely, even with injuries, stacked from top to bottom. Like, fucking stacked. And they can't fucking get credible challengers on either show, like, in any kind of succession. All they ever have for their divisions are the champion and the challenger. There is never anything else, except for right now for Raw, you have that Nikki Cross or Nikki A.S.H., cashed in so she's like inserted herself into that Rhea Charlotte feud besides that though on Raw there's not another woman on that roster who you could say could challenge for the championship belt right now well I mean it's sad too if you look at like the uh the women's tag team belts they almost feel like they're in the same category as the 24-7 title like they feel like they're a joke but you look at the NXT women's tag team titles those feel like real championships because everyone that's won it has been good champions. And plus they have so many like women's tag teams at NXT. It makes sense to have these belts and the main roster. They don't have any tag teams. They have Natty and Tamina, which was just thrown together, which I do not like them as a tag team. And they have uh, Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax who are just thrown together. And I do not like them as a tag team. What other tag teams do they have on the main roster? Like, they just got rid of a whole bunch of women that were, like, tag teams. So, like, literally on the main roster, they have two tag teams. And they just keep them going back to the same matches. It's boring. It's, like, yeah, it's – I just – I don't understand how, like, somebody that's in charge can see that. They can't see what we're seeing. Like – I mean, you can't be that stupid, right? Like, I, I just don't know what's going on. But Hey, man, their numbers don't slide, as everyone also who always says, oh, they're a business. 
Like, they still get their million viewers. So, you know, I guess I, I guess maybe we're the idiots. What maybe I mean, we're the idiots, Diesel. Okay, I mean, you're right about that. But, I mean, their viewership is, like, dropping. And AEW's viewership is rising and legitimately could be a real threat to, like, like, I don't know, like, there was always the hope that they would be even, and they're not even yet, but, like, it's getting to that point where I think a lot of people have, like, found AEW to be a suitable replacement, and, like, if they only have, like, time to watch one promotion, I think a lot of people are leaning more towards AEW, which is good for wrestling as a whole, but for the WWE, like, I don't, I don't get it. Like they need to get like back when during the invasion angle, when Mr. Man's like, we need the old stone cold. Like they need the old WWE. They need that mentality. Like, dude, they're coming and they're stepping on our territory and we're not going to have it. And we're going to put out the best product out there as we can. And, like, AEW has that mentality. Like, that's why they do everything they do is because, I mean, they want to make money for one. They want to steal WWE's viewers, and they just want to have the best product out there. They pride themselves in that. WWE has no pride anymore. And it's sad. It makes me sad because I grew up watching this company, and now I watch them, and it's just like, I all they do is talk bad about them. And, like, I don't want to talk bad about them because deep down, like, I still love them because, like, without them, I wouldn't be as big of a wrestling fan as I am today. It's just, it just makes me so angry because they don't care anymore. I 100% agree. It's, it's not, I'm, I'm not, we're not angry. We're disappointed. Exactly. And it's really what it comes down to as a WWE fan because I also agree. And that's where I landed with WCW, where I still hung on at the end of, you know, 2000, 2001 with the New Blood pay-per-view and just the absolute schlock that it was. But I I hung on till the end because, you know, it was it was mine. It was it, I, I loved it. It was what made me a wrestling fan. And then I switched over to WWF slash WWE and I still I can't let go. They they still and they still can they still can tell such stories every once in a while that I go yes that's why I love wrestling like the Money in the Bank pay per view I was thoroughly enjoyed like two weeks ago now I'm already pissed off again though and that's that's how quickly WWE turns on a fucking dime and it's just, it's infuriating it doesn't make any damn sense at all yeah I just yep and then you look at AEW. Who they have a bright future if the rumors are to be believed. I mean, nothing has been like officially announced, but like pretty sure like the rumblings about the stuff that's going on is true. Like it's like almost been written in the stars. And I like come this fall when you have two of the biggest names in the last 20 years of wrestling, like working for your company, like who isn't, who isn't going to be a lapsed fan that stopped watching in like 2012. That isn't going to be like, I'm checking out AEW now because like my guys, Daniel Bryan and CM Punk are there, you know, like the stuff WWE should be like conscious of to like get these people back in and they they don't care. They'd rather like stand ground and lose fans. I did, did, like I just can't I can't figure out like their psychology and like why they do what they do. And I try hard. Like I try to like make sense of stuff they do, and like I don't even know why because it never makes sense. Yeah. No. I just. It doesn't make any sense, and especially with the fact that AEW is basically, yeah, it's, if it doesn't happen at this point, I'm actually going to be more shocked if Daniel Bryan, aka Bryan Danielson, and CM Punk 
don't show up there here within the next few months. Uh, CM Punk at All Out and Daniel Bra- or Brian Danielson. That is going to drive me absolutely fucking insane. Having to switch back to saying Brian Danielson from Daniel Bryan. It is going to make my brain hurt. But whenever he debuts as well, they're both going to be there. And the fact that WWE is just letting this happen and just seemingly coasting on their laurels. Besides, don't get me wrong. I love the Roman Reigns, John Cena feud. I love everything about that. But the fact that they're doing a copy and paste feud with Bobby Lashley and Goldberg on the other show, and then basically nothing else, it seems, besides John Cena versus Roman Reigns and whoever the fuck is hosting SummerSlam, whatever the fuck her name is, like, it's just fucking mind-boggling. Especially especially after the great pay-per-view that was Money in the Bank. I just, I don't understand their logic. Like, they know that they are now up against it. Like, AEW is no longer fucking around. Like, they are actually now coming for the main roster. They finished off the sub-boss that was NXT on Wednesday nights and sent their asses back into uh, fucking uh, Tuesdays. Yeah, now they're starting a second show to have Rampage, and I know everyone's maligning it like, oh, how are they going to get people to watch it? Well, if they have Daniel Bryan or Brian Danielson and CM Punk to draw in the, you know, casual fans who haven't watched in years, that's how they get more eyes on their product, and that's how they get two shows, and they come for Friday nights, and they try and take out SmackDown. Like, The shots are being fired. It is no longer a casual war. This is an all-out war. Mm -hmm. And it's an all-out war that WWE is the, like, like, uh, they're basically the one person that everyone is against here. It is, they are fighting a war on all fronts because every other company has basically banded together and gone, you know what? No, we're all going to work together and fuck them. Well, I mean, the stupidest thing is they're fighting a war with themselves. Like, like you combine the main roster and the NXT roster, I mean, they have the best roster, without a doubt. Oh, yeah. All that talent that they have. But they're fighting, like, the, Vince McMahon sees the war between Raw and NXT. He doesn't see the war as WWE versus AEW or WWE versus any of the rest of them. You know, it just, it's just, it's nuts. Yeah, it's because they're all beneath him in Vince's eyes. And he looks at the ratings and his ratings are still getting those million dollars. But ratings don't really matter anymore, folks. It is all about the streaming shit. It's been proven time and time again. Like, it's just, it's insane that, like, WWE doesn't. Everyone who's out there, like, Vince doesn't care about them. And if Vince truly doesn't care about AEW, then is WWE truly a business? Because AEW is definitely their biggest competition. So as a business person, Vince should definitely give a fuck about AEW. Because it is his number one competition. You should be watching them each and every week trying to beat them. Because as a business person, that's what you would be doing. Yep. But I'm pretty sure he doesn't even watch Raw, even though he's sitting in Gorilla. He's probably playing Candy Crush or uh, WWE, whatever the newest uh, app on your phone is. Whatever, yeah. Champions or whatever. Probably downloaded and, The Rock. And <laughs> oh, yeah. But not the Macho Man, because he has problems. No, with definitely him. not the Macho Man. You see that meme where uh, somebody put the Macho Man's bandana and sunglasses on Triple H when he was standing next to Stephanie McMahon? Nope. Didn't see that one. Uh, with, with his beard right now, he looks... When you do that, he looks exactly like the Macho Man. It's weird. And I'm like, I finally see what she sees in him. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Well, on that note, 
I think that'll wrap up Diesel's uh, round for the top rope topic. And I guess that means it's my turn. So, my top rope topic, I wanted to have a little fun. I kind of figured yours might be a little negative. And the only thing I could think of, really, that I wanted to have a little fun with, as we were talking about, AEW is definitely, clearly signing CM Punk and Brian Danielson. So I wanted to fantasy book their first feud in AEW. And uh, either we can book both of them together, or if you want, one of us can book one and the other one can book the other one. Um, And I'll go first regardless, obviously. Well, I mean, it's like, rumor is that they're coming in, like, one at the beginning of the month, one at the end of the month, September. (laughs) And standard protocol in AEW is if you're a big name, your first feud has to be Cody Rhodes. So So both of them will feud with Cody Rhodes. Yeah. uh, Segment over. You can go first and you can pick whatever one you want. All right. It's your topic. I, I obviously am taking CM Punk then. Yeah, I figured. And CM Punk's feud that I actually really want him to come in and have is his first feud because I want him to feud with a few people. But the first guy I want him to go after is actually the Ayatollah of Rock and Rolla. You know, the man who claims to be the best in the world. Who said it so many damn times? Do you know who the true best in the world is? It was always CM Punk. So after uh, Chris Jericho finishes his seven trials of Jericho and he beats MJF, right as he's celebrating, woo, I'm great, I'm Jericho, just cult of personality hits and out comes the man, CM Punk. Shake his hand at first, then pulls him up, though, and hits a GTS. And that leads into just a massive, just war of words over... And then CM Punk basically gets to trash Jericho for being a just a sellout. Like, he came over here to AEW to, you know, be this thing. But he's done everything that he hated everybody else for being in the WWE. He's become this huge name. He's squash smaller stars he's held himself above the inner circle the entire time and cm punk is here to show that not only is chris jericho not the best in the world he's just a sham of a person as a whole and just just cm punk is one of the best at lambasting anybody as a person as a whole besides paul Heyman. so i just i just want to see chris jericho and cm punk go at each other for a good month and a half Mine is going to be All right. So and obviously it has to be Kenny Omega. And I know that like everyone's oh put him right at the top facing the champ, but like what is the biggest dream match for Brian Danielson in AEW? It's definitely Kenny Omega. And I would do it kind of like how they brought Jericho into the WWF. I would randomly have this, like, countdown clock show up every now and then. And, like, that will just be like, what does this mean? Like, what's going on or whatever? Um, I wouldn't have Hangman win the title yet. I still think that Hangman should be the one to take the title off of Kenny Omega, but Kenny Omega should hold it for a really long time. And when he does finally lose it, it'll feel like a bigger deal. But I don't know if this will be after like a Hangman title defense or he just defended it against somebody else, but uh, he'll get on the mic after his match. That kind of like Roman Reigns did uh at the end of money in the bank and be talking about or even don Callis could be talking about like 
he's beating everybody. There's nobody left in AEW that he hasn't beat. And, like, I dare anybody to come down and challenge the belt collector. And then the countdown starts at 10, and it goes down. And at the end of the countdown, all of a sudden you hear, do 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 So the whole time the clock is the final countdown, Brian Danielson returns. Because you know that AEW is going to pay for the, like, rights to use the music. They've done it for John Moxley. Recently, obviously, they're going to do the same thing for CM Punk. Like, they're going to do it because, like, that was, like, one of his trademarks on the independent scene. He came out to the final countdown. And it's going to be awesome. The fans are going to lose their shit. And I don't even want them to, like, do the yes, yes, yes. Like, that's WWE stuff. Just like Jericho said on Dynamite a couple weeks ago when the fans started chanting Y2J. He's like, that guy's dead. (laughs) Yeah, that was pretty hilarious. I actually really (laughs) love Jericho saying that. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I I want him to be the American Dragon and not Daniel Bryan. I want him to be Bryan Danison. I want him to be the technical wrestler of old. Like, I want him and Kenny Omega to put on like a 30 to 40 minute classic for the title. And like, I don't even care if Daniel Bryan or Brian Danielson loses by shenanigans. Like I just, yeah, I just feel like that has to be his first feud, you know, like, and like, obviously he's probably going to be more of a part time guy, but like it was different when Christian cage came into the, um, AEW, like, right away, we're like, I really hope he doesn't go up against Kenny Omega. Like, that would be dumb because I just brought him in. It's different. Like, Brian Danielson is, like I said earlier, in the last 20 years, one of the top wrestlers in the world. And that's a match that's never happened before. That's a big money match, too. Like, you put him in a title match right away, you're going to get people that – have have been hesitant and jumping ship to watch AEW. That's WWE loyalists coming over to see this match. And I guarantee you, they're not going to leave. They're going to stay on board with AEW. So I think as business, that would be probably a smart way to go as well. Yeah, I a hundred percent agree with that. All right. Two parts. Second part of my topic here. Uh, Second part of my topic right away is do you ever have CM Punk and Daniel Bryan face each other? I'm gonna call him Daniel Bryan here. I don't care. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna fix it. Mm, no, because I kind of think there is an opportunity, and I know this might sound hokey, and this might uh, turn out bad in the like the long, long run, but there is an opportunity to have, like, a modern-day NWO. And maybe not, like, immediately when they first come in to the company, but, like, you have them together. Like, even if you want to call them, like, the Nexus, like, not that name, but, like, modern-day Nexus or anything like that, I think that you put these two guys together, they could create a faction like that, and they could be really good like heels and like they could be like we're not AEW we're here to like tear AEW apart and maybe not go as far as NWO and like claim that their own they're their own organization and have like special NWO a pay-per-view and like all that stuff but like more go the nexus way like we're here we're here to destroy this company you know huh i not thought about that at all it's a very interesting take on it i immediately thought just yes because they did have a feud in the wwe and it was never given the top billing that it deserved so an actual top level main event like headlining feud between cm punk and brian danielson is also a huge huge money match so I was going to say yes immediately. I mean, obviously I'd tune in. I, I'd, I'd watch that for sure. Um, 
and that also bring more eyes on the AEW product because they're two established WWE guys that a lot of people know. But I don't know. I just think I think either way it's a win-win because people are gonna be like, oh, what's this faction they got going on over here and stuff like that, and like, like what if they like tore apart the super elite? Like, what if they were more heelish than the super elite and they just, like, demolish them, you know? Like, and, like, they have to go up against um, the inner circle. And, like, cause that's what I love about AEW is the factions. And, like, it's another thing back to my topic. Like, WWE doesn't do. And they'd be better off if they did do factions. But, like, AEW has all these factions and it, it just it's just better. Like, there's so many more stories you can tell because, like, you don't even have to have faction versus factions, but, like, there's just so more mo- moving pieces, and, like, it's just awesome. I like all of it. And sidebar. Sidebar. I really like the stuff from last week's Dynamite with Andrade and him talking to Pentagon and... uh Ray Phoenix and basically, like, why do you work for Pac? Like, we don't. It's like he don't work for anybody. We're a family. Like, I really like that stuff. Like, they're trying. Like, he's trying to start his own faction, and I do have a feeling that the Death Triangle is not long for AEW. I have a feeling they are going to turn on him, and I also like the fact that Chavo Guerrero is his manager now. Yeah, like. WWE so dumb. Letting Andrade go. Letting Aleister Black go. Pac, those are three former NXT champions that, you know. Yep. And all three of them now working for AEW. And once the... high profile spots. Yeah, once the Los Ignorables of AEW are established, I'm sure Pac will feud with all of them and produce multiple five-star matches that they could have easily had in the WWE. But instead, the WWE went, nah, that's all right. You can leave. It's cool. Yes. It's awesome. Like, yeah. All right. And then, as I said, I did have a final part of my topic. And it is, once Daniel Bryanson, whatever, (laughs) uh, and CM Punk debut for AEW, would do you think that Vince will start watching then? We brought it up last week on the podcast during the Mystery Brain Buster. But it, it needs to be brought up. Do you that if they debut, and this kind of stuff happens, is that what they finally need for the kick in the ass to say you need to do better? I don't know. Because, like, apparently... I don't think they care about CM Punk. The Daniel Bryan one might be more of a kick in the ass. Like, they have said it. Vince McMahon has said it. He's never doing business with CM Punk again. And he, like, I guess recently said this, like, as of last week when the reports were he was signing with AEW. And he basically said, I don't give a fuck because I ain't ever working with that man ever again. So... Like, I don't think the CM Punk one would worry him as much as Daniel Bryan. But then that being said, too, they always undervalued Daniel Bryan, too. Like, he he had to work 100 times harder than some other guys to be in the spot that he was in. Like, he made himself feel legitimate. The WWE never made Daniel Bryan feel legit. Daniel Bryan worked his ass off to get to where he was in that company. And he worked harder than any single person to get where he was. So, I don't know. Because of the way Vince McMahon feels about both of them, like, personally... The only reason I could see it being a kick in the ass is because he is a spiteful son of a bitch. And, but I mean, like, look at Jericho didn't do it, you know? Like, you want to make him mad, 
have like Stone Cold or The Rock appear on Dynamite. Like I think then he'll get mad. See, but, I think though the reason that Jericho didn't really infuriate him that much is because Jericho softened the blow by like asking permission basically to work with like New Japan. Like previous to that, like Jer- Jericho had already like softened the blows. Like I'm clearly leaving. I'm gonna do this slowly. But so he was already gone in Vince McMahon's eyes. Like I know that he said that he won't do you know business with CM Punk anymore. But once again, as a business person, you have to realize the big business that is in a CM Punk return. He is the man who has been chanted so many times at so many wrestling shows for so many years. And when a man in a mask returned to a small little Wisconsin independent wrestling show for a final night in a building that was closing that could have been CM Punk... It made wrestling news fucking everywhere. And that wasn't even confirmed to be CM Punk, though we do know that it was, apparently, according to our friends in the industry. But, so a real return of CM Punk is just astronomically such a big money thing that I think it has to move the needle for Vince. I think it has to. As much as he says it wouldn't, it has to. Yeah, I I understand what you're saying, and I feel like for you and I, that's how it would be. But, like, you can even go back to when some of the bigger stars left the WWF to go to WCW. It seems like he had certain people that, like, if they go, they go. But, like, there's a handful of people that they're here – So I don't care about those other people. Like when Kevin Nash and Scott Hall went to WCW, they might have been semi-important to Vince McMahon, but he was keeping Shawn Michaels. That's who he cared about. He still had The Undertaker. Like there was these guys, like even with like Bret Hart. Like Bret Hart, you can go, we got Stone Cold. You know, like I think he looks at it that way. Like what I have is better than what I'm losing and so I he talks himself into this like false confidence that like he's doing good. So I don't know. Like he he's a man of mystery. <laughs> it's a man like of things that make sense to you and I. Like yeah, don't like aren't the things that make sense to him. Logic is a baffling topic to some. It's just a baffling topic. Okay, I think that's all that I really had for my uh, three phases of my top rope topic because I just really kind of want to talk about the whole Daniel Bryelson and uh, CM Punk joining AEW speculatively. And yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it because it is definitely happening. I just, we don't know when, probably September, month, month or so. A little over, yeah. A little over. Okay, though, well, that was both of our main topics for the TRR section. So now it's time for... Wild card, bitches! Yes, as that sound effect just told you, it's time for the wild card topic round. So, Diesel, you did the main event round first, so I will go first for wild card topic. And my wild card topic this week is... So, with the Wonder Years, like, reboot about to start and me being very excited for it and for the first time in a long time like the nostalgia factor really winning me over are we going too far with nostalgia like at this point everything seems to be a reboot is it just too far is my topic okay i thought you were gonna go with the olympics one that was uh suggested um I'm going to go with one that was suggested, and it was suggested as a joke, but it's not a joke after today. And uh, I want my um, wild card topic is Aaron Rodgers. This is more Aaron Rodgers talk. 
Oh, I mean, that's what we were going to talk about regardless. That's why I said what I said, because I didn't want my vote to have to really matter, because I didn't actually want to talk about that. So we're going to with what you want to talk about this week. Okay. So those that aren't in the know and don't follow the NFL, uh, training camp started this week, and Aaron Rodgers reported to Packers training camp after uh, coming to terms on uh, an agreement with the Packers where they – um, voided the last year of his contract for 2023, which saves the Packers in cap room. So he's under contract for two seasons now. And like rumor has it, he's playing this year. And then they basically told him like, we'll trade you at the end of the season. Um, but basically what I want to talk about is he had spoke in front of the media for the first time today and like was had like an hour long press conference which in training camp is kind of rare usually you're up there for like 10 15 minutes but i mean he hasn't spoken like to the media basically since they lost the nfc championship game there's been a lot that's happened since then um and i didn't hear all of it but i heard a lot of it and like I heard some of, like, the local sports radio shows talking about it and stuff like that. And, like, my, like, conclusion to everything he says is pretty similar to what I've been hearing, too, is, like, damn, like, stuff is starting to make a little more sense. And, like, I've been saying, like, I've been mad at both sides, Packers management and him, but, like, hearing what he has to say sounds a little more legit and more like what the fuck like front office of green bay what like it doesn't make sense the biggest takeaway i had was he talked about how like basically what he wants is just to be in the conversation when it comes to like free agents and other stuff like that and he says that he's done his own scouting and and i'm obviously paraphrasing but and he's brought like opinions to the front office and they basically just told him, no, you're the quarterback. You play for us. You shut up, you look pretty and throw the ball. And like he, I mean, basically when it comes down to it, that's what they said to him. And like, he, he doesn't want that. He wants to win and he wants to be a part of winning. And he had a lot to say about how veterans in the previous years have been treated and how they kind of, and he, like, had a whole list in it. He was name-dropping. And, like, I've never heard Aaron Rodgers, like, speak like this before. But he he pulled back the curtain. Like, he broke the fourth wall. <laughs> like, it it was a oh, very, he very the fourth or, wall. Like, it was more, one of the more interesting, like, NFL press conferences that I've ever even heard. Like, usually... Stuff that happens behind the scenes, you don't talk about in front of the media. But, like, no. Like, and the way he did it, too, by not talking, like, for eight months was, if you think about it, was actually a good play because then you put all the pressure on the Packers front office. And because they can't not talk. they Somebody has to say something. And, like, he lets it build and lets it build and lets it build until this moment. And then when, like, everything that comes out, it's, like, everything sounds believable. And, like, basically what it comes down to is he's a guy that wants to win. And I think he cares more than the fans around here, like, thought he cared. I mean, I'm not – I'm still not, like, happy, like, with the situation at all. But, like, hearing – what he had to say makes me even more believer that Mark Murphy has to fucking go. Like, God, that guy is an idiot. Like, how do you let this happen? Like, just listen to the guy. You know what I mean? Like, he knows, like he said, he's been there for 16 years. He's been there starter for 13 years. He's been there longer than most anybody that works for the organization. And they don't want to listen to, like, his opinions. Like, he's won three MVPs. He 
like everybody knows that Aaron Rodgers has a high IQ too. Like he's a smart guy. And like, I just don't understand why, like you just play football. That's what you do. It's like, he's not your average like player. It's, I don't know. So I, I kind of understand like more now after hearing this press conference today than I did before. And I mean, obviously the whole them trading for Randall Cobb, which to me is laughable, but like, obviously, and like, I knew this before the press conference and everything like that. Um, <laughs> it was all him. That was probably one of the things like, cause he talked to the Packers high brass before the training camp started this week. And that was probably one of the concessions he had was bring back Randall Cobb. And like, it's like, they're like, give me Cobby. Okay. Because like, honestly, you think Brian Gunnikins, the general manager who like let Cobb go three years ago and thought he was washed up then wanting to bring this guy back when he's three years older. Like he let him go when he's in his twenties, Cobb's in his thirties now and receivers once again, their thirties, like they're not all Larry Fitzgerald. So it's, it's definitely all Aaron Rodgers, but maybe JR can uh, bring back his famous uh, uh, fantasy football name, slob on my Randall Cobb. That was, <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. That was a classic. Classic. Yeah, I mean, that, I don't have much to say about it, but, like, it just makes more sense now. And I'm kind of interested, since you're, like, you don't hate the Packers, but they're not your, like, number one team. Yeah. So I'm more interested to hear what your thoughts on all of this is. And I I mean, none of it, is, like, is shocking to me. As, as much as, like, as I say, Aaron Rodgers is kind of a dickhead. He's kind of a douche. It's just who he is. I've always been on his side about this. It's always seemed like he's been, hey, I want more say in it. And I think your quarterback should have a say in who he's, you know, fucking playing ball with. I don't care. It's the NFL we live in nowadays. I get it. Back in the day and all the old school NFL pundits and shit are like, oh, no, you just go. You're here to play football. Yeah, great. That's how it wasn't your day. When there wasn't free agency and there wasn't social media and there wasn't all of these huge fucking things where all these people are friends and they all know each other constantly and are all hanging out at all times. It's a different age. okay? so you have to adapt. And nowadays, just like Tom Brady went to Tampa Bay and guess what? Tom Brady got everything he wanted. Hey, and guess what? Who scored the touchdowns in the Super Bowl that won Tampa Bay their first Super Bowl in years? Oh, wait, was it the tight end that Tom Brady said, hey, I want him out of retirement to come back to the team? Oh, and hey, was it the wide receiver that nobody else wanted in the NFL, but Tom Brady played with for the Patriots for a few weeks before he had some very serious, you know, legal issues? Oh, wait, yeah, it was Rob Gronkowski and Antonio Brown, wasn't it? Oh, fuck. Oh, it's just if you give your superstar quarterback what he wants and, you know, you give him time to do what he wants, he just might win a Super Bowl championship instead of. 